Well, today I want us to begin by reflecting together on a statement, a question, and an image. First is the statement, faith is a gift. Faith cannot be purchased, it cannot be sold, it can only be witnessed to and shared and given away, and therefore, faith is available to all people everywhere. Second, I'd like to ask a simple question. To whom are you indebted for your faith? What parent or relative or Sunday school teacher or pastor or friend shared first with you the love of God in Christ Jesus? Well, third, I'd like to share an image up on the wall, or actually several images. They are from the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels in Los Angeles. You see the image. These are the tapestries that hang on the walls on either side of the sanctuary. They show saints, men, women, boys, and girls through the ages who have faithfully followed Jesus. You see the beautiful details on the faces? These are people of all races and occupations who have shared their faith and handed it down to you and me. When you worship in the cathedral of Our Lady of All Angels in Los Angeles, you are literally surrounded by a reminder that you and I are not alone. We are never alone. Not only is God with us, but you and I are surrounded by the great cloud of witnesses, the company of faithful both in heaven and on earth who walk with us too. Well, since the earliest days of Christendom, the faithful have gathered to give thanks for the life and ministry of saints, faithful men and women who witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ in every generation. The witness of many of these blessed men and women, such as St. Francis or St. Teresa or St. Augustine or John Calvin or John Knox or Dietrich Bonhoeffer or Martin Luther King Jr. are well known. Many of their writings have become popular. Their deeds inspire us to name hospitals and schools and churches for them. And their service to the church is taught to the faithful in every generation. Some of the saints, like Jack Gaffney and Otis Andrews, Lila Lowe, Tommy Hinton, Hilda Johnson, Janet Tyre, Francis Wood, and Doris Alden, their faith stories are remembered more locally here at Star Mount. And still for others, everyday saints, their lives and witnesses have long been forgotten by churches and families and the world and are now only known in the heart of God. But regardless of how much or how little you and I know about them, one thing is certain, they receive their faith just like we did as a gift from someone that they knew And their experience of the love of God in Jesus Christ caused them to change, to live differently, to behave differently, to value differently. It caused them to live their lives in a more Christ-like manner. And as you and I gather to remember and celebrate the saints today, we are called to give thanks to God for all the saints, Christ followers in every age. And we're called to be more like him. And so the final question I'd like us to consider is how do you and I become more blessed, more saintly in our lives? Well, of course, by worldly standards, it would appear that the saints didn't know very much about being good role models. Most of them didn't know the first thing about wealth. Many of them lived all or part of their lives in poverty. Status and power that comes with wealth was a foreign concept. And many of the saints never knew high-paying or revered jobs. Instead, they chose to work for little or no money at all, serving the poor and helpless. And far from inspiring fear or subordination, many of the saints were hated and met untimely deaths because they proclaimed their faith so boldly. But worldly status and and patterns and standards were not how the saints patterned their lives. They, like us, are called to live not by earthly standards of success and blessing, but by Jesus' standards. 
And Jesus sets out his standards in the Sermon on the Plain in Luke's Gospel. Jesus says that if you and I want to live faithfully, if we want to be blessed so that we too can be a blessing to others, if we want to count ourselves among the company of saints, then we need to live accordingly. Jesus wants us to develop attitudes and beliefs and values which are radically different from the standards that the rest of the world is accustomed to. Jesus says, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is in heaven. Did you hear it? Poverty, hunger, mourning, hatred, exclusion, revilement, and defamation. These things certainly don't sound like blessings. They don't, certainly don't seem like laudable values to orient our lives. But Jesus is convinced that they are. And most shockingly of all, Jesus says that it is to these people, folks who practice these values, to whom the kingdom of God is entrusted. And of course, I know some will raise their hands in objection and say, we can't possibly trust the kingdom of God to a bunch of poor folks. They don't know the first thing about business or what it takes to run a kingdom. Others may say the kingdom of God is just a fancy term tossed around by church folks and pastors and theologians. It isn't really possible on earth. There's just too much violence and oppression and chaos. Or worst of all, some will hear the words of Jesus and say, see there, Jesus will take care of the poor and the hungry and the sorrowful and the hated in heaven. So I don't need to get involved with helping them here on earth. Yet with piercing clarity, Jesus looks the opponents of the kingdom of God in the eye and pronounces a stern warning. Woe to you who are rich, for you've received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. In other words, woe to you who don't know what poverty looks like or what hunger feels like. Woe to you who have never known an occasion for mourning. And woe to you who manage to tell everyone what they want to hear instead of the truth that that they so desperately need to hear. And so you and I gather here on All Saints Sunday with words of blessing and words of woe ringing in our ears amidst beautiful trappings and festive songs and memorial celebrations. But let us not lose sight of the fact that today God is calling you and me to action. God is calling us to lead saintly lives and bear witness to the kingdom of God in word and in deed. And the kingdom of God is witnessed by Jesus in Luke's gospel, not as some abstract theological term about a time and a place that the world has never known. No, for Luke, the kingdom of God is intended to be right here and right now, any place where you and I exchange our worldly values for saintly, godly, Christ-like values. The kingdom of God breaks through anywhere and at any time we love our enemies. It takes hold when we do good to those who hate us. It comes alive when we bless those who curse us. It shines brightly when we pray for those who abuse or mistreat us. It shows up when we honor the requests of beggars. And when we live our lives by the principle of do to others as you would have them do to you, we become citizens of the kingdom. Of course, the work of building the kingdom is not easy, but then again, as Jesus reminds us here in Luke's gospel, life with God isn't easy either. Life with God means that we will know what it is to be poor or hungry or sorrowful or cursed. Life with God means that we will know what it is to be unpopular, to be discounted and overlooked. And life with God means that we will know what it is to be hated. But the good news 
is that the kingdom of God is built brick by brick and stone by stone by people such as these, everyday saints like you and me, people who know what poverty and hunger and sorrow and being cursed look like, people who know how it feels to be overlooked and discounted, people who, knows, who know what being hated feels like. So today on All Saints Sunday, let us begin to live by a different set of standards. Instead of worldly standards, let us begin to live by the standards of the kingdom starting today. It starts by loving our enemies. It starts by showing kindness to people who don't deserve it. It grows into the ability to bless those who would curse us, to pray for those who would mistreat us or take advantage of us. It manifests itself in the ability to listen and show and honor, show honor to those who are forced to beg. It is lived out not in the comfort of our own homes or our churches or our offices, but among the poor and the hungry and the sorrowful and the hated. Because after all, the kingdom of God belongs to them. It belongs to us, the everyday saints of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now, friends,